Well, to me, it, it brings back a happy memory, actually, because I, I remember I got my Cooper, and uh, brand new, and I, and I called up Chelsea Walsh, or put an entry in, and they turned it down. And, and um, Prescott accepted it, and so I, I felt pretty good. And uh, I came here, did, did quite a few climbs, actually. And I, 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 the great thing about it, I feel, that for anybody starting, it is the place to go, you know, on the hill climb rather than the motor race, because in a race, You've got other people to judge your ability by, whereas on, on the hill, you've only got the time. And so it's much more, I think, realistic. And, and there's nobody else to hit, and nobody else to hit you, and all those sort of things that happen. So uh, I have happy memories of it. At the moment, I don't have a road car. I have, a, I have a, a, an RS61 Porsche, uh, which I haven't driven yet, which is being prepared ready for Le Mans in, uh, in June. Uh, I did 500, 585 races, so it's difficult to choose one. I think either the Mili Milia on open roads or Monaco in 61 was probably my best race because it was 100 laps and over the whole race there was never, never more than three seconds between myself and the Ferraris just behind me. So that was, you know, a very tough one. Oh, motor racing is now very, I mean, one of the safest sports because the cars are so incredibly well, not just well built, but built of incredible materials, which did not exist, of course, earlier. And I think that, the, I think now the, the races are becoming far more interesting. I think the qualifying is fantastic. Uh, I don't think the drivers have anything like the quality of life that I did. I mean, if I won a race, um, I mean, now if, say, Lewis Hamilton wins a race, he has to go along and chat up the people at, at Vodafone. If I won a race, I try to chat up a bird. So it's, it's totally different. You can't compare yesterday with now. But uh, I think the drivers, I'm sure if they raced in my era, uh, they would have been as good as they are now, you know. I mean, they, they wouldn't certainly, I think it'd be staggered if they got into the sort of cars of the 50s, because they were obviously quite unsafe by comparison. But uh, the, the good news, I think, is that, it, that the sport is improving every day. Oh, fake great! I think I think it's a fabulous idea, actually. But but you see, it would probably wouldn't work today because in in my time you only had one, you had two. Well, actually, one tire to choose with originally. Then they brought out a green spot, which was for, for wet weather, which was actually faster in the dry than than anything else because it was a very soft rubber. So it was quite different. Uh, now, of course, they, I mean, you've got intermediates, you've got dries, you've got... So which, which tower would they start with? I think the idea is great, but I don't think it's really a feasible one. Well, F1's changed so much, you know, I mean, really and truly. I mean, the, every, every driver out there, of course, has come up by our carts. And, of course, in my, in my time, they, they didn't exist. I mean, the carts didn't come in until the late 50s, I think. But I think at the moment, obviously, Vettel is, is running away with it. He's running away because not only is he so good, I mean, you, he's also got Adrian Newey behind him. And if you put those two together, that's an unbeatable combination. I mean, I, really, I think he has enormous talent. And, and Lewis, Lewis, I think, is, is terrific because he's so exciting to watch. He's a late breaker. He controls the car well. He has a go. He doesn't, you know, doesn't give up. So, but, but I think there are you know, quite a few guys out there who are extremely competent. most influential, probably Bernie Eccleston. Uh, I mean, he's done, people are always having a go at him, but in, in truth, he's done a tremendous amount for Formula One. Uh, it may have helped him as well. But I mean, I can remember when I went to the, I think it was Dutch Grand Prix in 1951 or two, and I had to take my wife of that time, had to take her in, into the pits in the back of my Mark 7 Jag, because I couldn't get a pass. They could use three passes, one for the driver and two mechanics. And, and it's, now it's completely different. Well, a uh, guy who finds, you know, he's a sort of not, not exactly a manager, but a chap who helps me out, he came to me and said, look, there's lots of kids out there who have no idea who the hell you are.
and this is very watched. I mean, kids all around the world watch the thing. He said, if you go on that, the fathers or grandfathers who are with them, watching early in the morning, say, Sterling Moss, I remember that guy. He was a racer many years ago. And so it's a whole new batch of, of people coming of, of people coming into racing, or, in, or into watching racing, at least. This is a pretty sensational place, I must say. Uh, I'm still trying to find my, which door goes where, and, but it really is lovely. I, absolutely, I mean, it's been so sympathetically done, and I, I think it's a great, a great uh, credit to the archi architect, because normally I don't think much of architects, but I think he's done a tremendous job here, really do.